what can I do this summer? Happy summer, guys. It's, I mean, it's 95 degrees out there. School's out. Can there be any doubt that summer is here? Hello, I'm Pastor Travis from A Faithful Dad. We are a ministry that encourages dads and families. And what we've been doing here over the last several weeks is a new video series that's over a year in the making. Our board and with God as our leadership put this together. And this is A Faithful Dad Speaks. And the way this works is it's about what we do in, in a ramp up to the video series, you know, the, the time of teaching on Sunday, 3 p.m., is I'll have little teasers throughout the week. So Monday through Saturday, there'll be a less than 60 second video kind of advertising, get, get people excited and we're very encouraged by how God is using it. And it comes down to this, you know, on, and the way this format works is we, I teach about 10 minutes and then I take a few questions and we pray and close it out and start a new series next week. So it's, it's just been such a blessing. So happy summer to you. The, the topic, of course, today is you know, what can I do with my summer? You know, what can I do this summer? You know, there's always this feeling that sometimes things that we love get away from us so quickly. You know, we've seen that whether, you know, even school, right? You know, school, uh, you know, a relationship that we love. You know, I think about my parents, you know, uh, a place where we were. What about summer? You know, we love summer. Summer is probably the most popular of all the seasons. And what I want you to kind of think about is when this summer is over, I'm not trying to get it over before you know, barely started, but when this summer is over, what are you going to be feeling? Are you going to be feeling yeah, that you used it well? Are you going to be feeling like, gosh, you know, I could have done something differently about that. And that's just this, this, this discussion today is just a little bit about that, like kind of thinking ahead to Labor Day. And when summer is over, we'll have to spend it in a way I was you know, thankful for and proud of. And, and uh, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to go through today. So the scripture I've selected was an easy one to choose. It's, it's Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 7. It's, of course, Solomon. And he said, light is sweet and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. Who can doubt that? You know, when my wife and I were first married, we were in Dayton, Ohio at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And it seemed like that place was as cloudy as London. It was all these clouds. It, it really depressed my wife. It was kind of, a, you know, in some regards, if that's not your thing, it's depressing to live there in a, in a place that's cloudy. But when summer comes, you know, there's light everywhere. You know, we just went through the longest day, the first day of summer. And you know, we can understand when Solomon says the light is sweet and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. You know, at least here comes the sun, you know, all kinds of allusions to that. So I, I kind of want to tie that thread through the discussion this afternoon of, you know, what can I do this summer? As I've done before, I have three points. The first point is this. Enjoy your family. You know, that's one of the biggest blessings God has given us. And I'm not only talking to those who have, you know, who are married but single, you know, extended families as well. Enjoy your family. You know, this this time of COVID-19 with social distancing, yeah, I'd rather call it physical distancing, but with social distancing and, and keeping things apart, you know, it's brought a lot of families together. Yes, it's a scary time. You know, I myself had to go through, you know, the, the, the furlough and I mean, applying for unemployment. There's some, you know, <laughs> some baggage with that. But there's millions of us who are in that situation. So when I say enjoying your family, you know, what a lot of us think of is, is you know, we have to be playing Yahtzee all day or we have to be, you know, one on one. Time. And you know what? Those things are great. But enjoying your family can take so many different forms. But, you know, one of the things that they say is, you know, how do kids spell uh, L-O-V-E? They spell it T-I-M-E, time, <laughs> time with each other. And my wife is the same way. She enjoys me spending time with her. So whether that's going on a walk or whether that's sitting down and just talking, you know, about what the day was, and, you know, what, 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 what the hopes and dreams are, what, what she would like to see happen in the future or with my children, having a chance to just, Hey, when's your work schedule? Tell me about what school looks like for you. What, what, what are you thinking of? Or even today on a Sunday, we had a chance to attend church like millions of us are on the internet. We're, we're, we're watching 
you know, Pastor Bob Sproul at Grace Point Church. He's doing a great job, you know, keeping us connected to the flock, keeping us connected to the body. But those opportunities, when we say enjoy time with your family, going to church with them, spending time with them. And then as, as the message closed out, I have what I've done each week is to say, hey, guys, how can I be praying for you? And then each one would share something like, hey, dad, can you be praying about this? And some are funny, some are real, you know, but it's, it's, it's just an opportunity. So what can I do this summer? Number one is enjoy your family. Such a gift. Spend that time with your, with your, with your bride, your husband, um, for you ladies out there, and also with your kids, with your extended family. Yesterday we had a graduation party for my for my nephew. It's just so good. I saw my cousin. I mean, it's just it's spending time with family. Enjoy your family. Point number two: take a vacation, or in many cases, take a staycation. Now, what a lot of times happens, and I've talked to a lot of people about this. A lot of us don't feel comfortable going on vacation because we don't have any money to go on vacation. You know, so that might be an excuse like, hey, I'm not going to do that because I can't afford it or or more to the point, you know, we were just on a three month vacation, you know, it was kind of a forced vacation from March to the, you know June. And I didn't really want that. So I, I want to get back to work and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I'm going to break my stride again. And, and I, and, and I tell you, I, I say this because that's the way I feel. <laughs> I know this time off and now I'm just, you know, ramping up in my job and getting things going in the right direction. But it's important to take a vacation. And you know, when I say a vacation, you don't have to go to Disney World. So, so many of these places, even Hershey Park here locally, you know, just opened up. There's restrictions. It's not so much going to a place, but, but being able to relax. You know, we definitely work hard. And that time together with family, it's a little bit, sounds like a little bit like point two, doesn't it? You know, spending and joining your family, but taking a vacation is very important. You know, light is sweet and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. When we're so busy, I noticed on a, I did an outdoor walk yesterday for my cardio. And a lot of times I'm just, I'm looking at the ground, you know, I'm looking at the ground and, and, and trying to make good time. I'm watching my Apple watch, seeing about my, you know, about my, you know, how many miles per minute I'm, I'm, I'm walking, that type of thing or what my rate is rather. But one of the things my dad taught me uh, being a forester was to look around when you walk. So here I am, I'm looking around and I realize when I'm looking at the stones, I'm not paying attention to God's beauty, the things that he's created in this earth, just this beautiful, verdant, <laughs> wonderful uh, landscape and trees and vines and birds and a groundhog was looking at me. That's really kind of a metaphor for life, isn't it? When we're so busy looking at the stones, in other words, working, you know, driving down that path, we got to take our mind off that and take our heart off just, just for just for a time and enjoy other things that God's created outside of work. And again, you don't have to spend a lot of money to do that, but even going to a local lake, going to a local attraction, something close, you know, there's nothing wrong with going far. In fact, you know, many, many of us will do that, but it's important again, you know, what can I do this summer is is to take that vacation, take that staycation, get out and get about and enjoy the light that is so prevalent this time of year. Point number two. Point number three is this. Spend time with God. You know, I can think of no better thing I'd rather do in the summer than spend time with my Lord. And during this time, it's like, you know, a lot of us, when we wake up in the morning, it's light and we go to bed at night, it's light. I mean, it's, it's a bit like Alaska, isn't it? With the long days that we have. And spending time with God can take the form of so many different, so, so many different actions. You know, the number one one I always go to is your quiet times. You know, grabbing God's word and going out there and just picking a favorite psalm or picking something out of the gospels that Jesus said or reading one of the Pauline scriptures, you know, playing Bible roulette, pick something in there, but just go out into God's wilderness. And even if it's sitting on your porch or it's just taking a, a little hike to the park and having a chance to just spend time with them, just reading and light is sweet and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. That light is pouring in on your Bible and you just, you're, you just, no matter what state of mind you are, going back to God's word is always so comforting. It's always so affirming. You know, this world that we're in right now is so different than it was even just six months ago. 
we can say, yeah, it was different, no, it's not different. But with the COVID, this is truly one of those experiences that is going to show up in the history books. You know, I lived part of that. And then with all the tension that is going on in the world right now, it's just such a crazy time. And, and we feel like, you know, out is in and in is out. And, and, and there, there, there seems to be, in some cases, no semblance of peace. But when you get into God's word and you just spend time with him, we're not going to understand why things are going like they are, you know, why this happened, why COVID happened, why all these awful events of injustice are happening in, in almost the rule of anarchy in some places. But we've got a lot of questions, but the answer, my friends, is God. The answer is this, even though we don't know why these things have happened, we have no clue. God does. God is sovereign. He is in command. There's no part of COVID-19 that he did not anticipate, did not see going down, did not see coming. He saw it all. There's no part of the, of, of the, 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 the trauma that we're going through, this life, even the good things, the bad things that he doesn't know. So as you're, as you're analyzing your summer, like how to spend time, you know, what can I do this summer? My number one thing, it's my point three, <laughs> is to spend time with God, reading his word, praying to him, fellowship with him, with other believers at a six foot distance, of course, and memorizing his word and just giving him glory for who he is. He is there, you know, it, it is so true. So true. So I always close with a challenge, and the challenge is this. Don't let your summer get away without spending time with those most important to you. Again, the challenge is this. Don't let your summer get away without spending time with those most important to you. Again, point number one is enjoy your family. So spending time with your family. Point number two is take a vacation with your family even with yourself, you know, if, if you're single. And number three, spending time with God. Light is sweet and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. And there is so much sun this time of year. So that is what we're, that's what my challenge is right now, that you would, that you would do that. So what I'll go to now is, I'll just see if there's any comments here that we've got. Okay, here's one. And this is a good one. My wife's a teacher on a three-month break. My kids are off school, and I'm working and jealous. <laughs> what can I do? And, you know, not all of our wives are teachers, but that, that, that's a tough one, isn't it? You know, everybody's, and if I can just sum it up, everybody's working and off, and I got to go to work. You know, <laughs> what can I do? You know, and, and I have a buddy of mine who has this exact same situation. We talked through it, and to me, it is really about being joyful of others, <laughs> being joyful that God is blessing them with those vacations. But we go out and work the, you know, the 50, 60, 70 hour weeks. We have to work sometimes to, to put bread in the table. And it's, it's a challenge, isn't it? You know, but I think in those situations, you know, I have, where I have to check my heart is with my kids off, you know, when, when we're all in school, things are going very, uh, you know, almost like a train. Everybody's got their job and it's getting done. And if they do their job, I don't have to do their job. So there's more time for me. But in the summer, I find that the dishes don't always get done and the, and the, and the, you know, the dog mess doesn't always get cleaned up and the grass doesn't always get mowed. So it, to me, it's, it's almost an opportunity for showing grace. And I don't always show grace that way. And I, this week was one of those weeks where I didn't. But it's one of those things that even if others are off, just Praise God for that, that God has given him that gift. Our, it's a test for us, and it's an opportunity to show love to your family. So, again, di difficult situation. Let's see if we've got some other ones here. Uh, number two, here's one. How can I relax? I have to wear one of those masks wherever I go. You know, and, and isn't, that, isn't that true? There's, like the masks, the, the, you know, everybody's wearing them, and now there's a government mandate. Do we have to wear masks? You know, and that's hard because like you're know, you wearing them at the gym, you know, you're wearing them at work and you're standing out in 95 degree weather, with these masks on. But there's a way that I've, you know, that I think is a good way to look at this. It's again, almost like another test. You know, this, this is a civil authority telling us to, you know, and there's, I don't want to get into that, you know, as far as what the government can and can't tell us to do, but you know, we're asked to wear masks to prevent the spread of this awful, this awful disease. And it becomes a matter of obedience, doesn't it? 
know. So we can enjoy the light. Light is sweet. It pleases the eyes to see the sun. We can enjoy that light. But I think the mask really can mask a broader concerns in our lives, which are, you know, well, you know, how can I have, uh, you know, how can I have relax if I don't have enough money or how can I relax if I, you know, wasn't born in a privilege or how can I relax if, if, if my kids are misbehaving, how can I relax if my wife doesn't pay attention to me? You know, these are all real and legitimate issues, but in a sense, they, they, they are getting in the way. You know, we can still, regardless of what happens to us, we, we, whether it's wearing a COVID mask or, or people treating us poorly, we can still not enjoy the Lord, even, even especially in situations that are difficult. So you can enjoy that light by putting yourself last and putting God first and um, doing the best you can to uh, put up with the, uh, the challenges that come. Uh, the last question I'll take here is, how can I spend time with God if I don't feel close to him? See, now there's a good question. You know, how can I spend time with God if I don't feel close to him? You know, I, you know what I'll hear people say is, you know, I talk to God and he's just not listening to me. You know, I, I've been telling God this for years and he, and he, he, is he, is he, he's not paying attention to me. You know, why did this person die? You know, I, I prayed that they would. Why did that happen to me? You know, and these are all really excellent examples of, of the faith, you know, you know, I can't see him. How can I be close to him? But if we go to the words of the apostles, John, uh, James, in chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. James chapter 4, verse 8. So there, there, there's an action and a reaction in this, isn't it? You know, so so again, the question is, how can I how, how can I spend time with God if I don't even feel close to him? And what James is telling us is as we come near to God. He comes near to us. Now, don't mistake me. It's not that God left you. God will never leave you nor forsake you ever. But as you spend time with him, as I shared in point number three, as you spend time with him, that ice will begin to break. That ice will begin to show its fissures and crack and begin to fall. And even in times when you don't feel close to God, whether it's COVID-19 or it's an unemployment or it's you know, both you and your spouse are off, and you're having trouble paying the bills, you can still come near to God. So again, where I'm going with this is what can I do this summer? And there's a lot we can do this summer. And my challenge is, is that you would spend time with those most close to you. Let's close in prayer. Father God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you for the beauty of summer. May we use it for your glory so that when it ends, the summer ends, we will have felt we've done all we can do to give glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thanks for joining us. Faithful Dad Speaks. We'll be back next Sunday at 3 p.m. on Facebook Live. I look forward to seeing you then. Of course, I always appreciate your comments. Any critiques, concerns, let me know. Praise God. See you soon. Amen.